Well, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. It's lovely to be here to be able to speak to you all about what I consider to be probably, possibly, the most important subject within the coaching world. It's to do with accreditation and being able to look the world in the eye and say you are indeed a professional and an accredited coach. Now, I've invited an old friend and colleague, Dawn Campbell. Dawn and I have known each other for so many years. We've worked together shoulder to shoulder in the coaching industry. And Dawn is now one of the board directors of the International Authority for Professional Coaching and Mentoring, the leading accreditation body in the coaching world, and one that is now working with professional coaches and accrediting them to the highest level in dozens and dozens of countries all over the globe. So I'm delighted to have been able to find a small slot within Dawn's diary and ask her to join us today and just briefly cover some of the main topics and questions all around the piece. What is accreditation? What is credentialing? Why is it important? And so on. Dawn, good morning. Are you there? Good morning, Gerard. Well, I mean, I think you've just given a beautiful summary there. You know, accreditation is important. I don't need to say anything else. Thank you. <laughs> if only everyone were, were to feel the same way, Dawn. I know. And, you know, when I, when I uh, meet people who are from the therapy background or the medical background, it's like, it's a no brainer, Dawn. I don't want you to tell me about why accreditation is important. Just get me accredited. Um, but there's still a lot of people out there, I understand, who want to understand um, what it's all about and the difference between certification. So there, there is. And, and as you rightly say, if we look at any of the other what we would call mm -hmm. prof professions around the world, mm -hmm. from accounting to lawyers to doctors to nurses to um, I, architects, you know, anyone and everyone who deals with the public and have the public as a client and provides a product or service almost in my mind has a duty of care to that member of the public mm -hmm. to be able to have raised their own level of professionalism to the highest available yeah. and but there is a question a lot of coaches especially young ones in the industry get confused with the words accreditation certification credentialing and so on Maybe you could spend a moment helping people to understand the difference. Mm, absolutely. And and you're absolutely right as well, Jared, about all the different professions who um, have registered bodies where you are accredited. And why should coaching be any different? I don't know. Um, because as you say, whether you're picking a, a driving instructor or an accountant or a colonic therapist, as we're both uh, very much into health, you know, we wouldn't just go to anybody. We would want to do due diligence and check that they are properly trained, that they're insured, if insurance is applicable in that country, and that they are accredited. So a typical example that uh, we find across the world is in the field of education. So uh, when we accredit uh, universities, um, they're giving their students a degree, which is a form of certification. But it's the university that themselves has put their course through an accreditation process to make sure it's of the highest standard. And um, we know that when students, particularly international students, are looking um, around the course for the, uh, you know, around the world for the best course, they're looking for key differentiators. And one of them is accreditation where is the best place to spend my money where are the, the guarantees where are the comebacks if I need to speak to somebody if things aren't right so certification is something your students are going to get through going uh, on your accredited course but they personally are not accredited so they will then have to apply at the end and use the certificate that you give them as proof that they are properly trained. And then together with all the evidence that we ask for, they can then apply for their own personal accreditation. And it's gonna help them stand out in a very crowded market the way it does with uh, courses. So a, a, a one way of maybe uh, explaining this is when you go to a college or a university, you do a one, two or three year course, mm -hmm. you leave with a certificate and yeah. we would call that in the world of education a qualification. You have yeah. a qualification, 
but you then have to go to your governing body. So if you've done a three year course at course to be to get a, a degree as an accountant, you would then go to the Institute of Accountants mm -hmm. to get the proper national accreditation. Is that correct? Exactly. And then you would be on a, a national register and the public will go to that register and pick somebody to work with because you've gone through that process. OK, great. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So accreditation is higher than certification. And that's one of the things a lot of students don't understand. They've spent a couple of thousand. They've spent a couple of years studying and they think that is it. Accreditation is about pulling it all together. It's kind of like the cherry on the cake. Mm -hmm. um, it's very official and it's um, probably what I, I, I remember when you said to me, Jared, a long time ago, um you know the marines had a slogan the royal marines about 99 percent need not apply um yeah. well it's not quite like that but i do tend to think that um when you're accredited you're properly trained you're insured you are in the one percent club so we could almost say that 99 percent of practitioners out there uh just don't bother so if we look at the UK alone, you've got 130,000 people calling themselves coaches. It doesn't mean they're properly trained. It doesn't mean they're insured. And it certainly doesn't mean they're accredited. Um, so accreditation is definitely the highest level that you can do. Great. Well, thank you for covering that so succinctly. So if, if let's say, I spend time, effort, energy and money Mm -hmm. training with an organization to be a great coach mm -hmm. i receive a certificate which will either be a certificate or a diploma yes. so i receive my qualification at the end of my time mm -hmm. why does it really matter if i then go and get the, this accreditation mm -hmm. It matters for several reasons. Um, as you know, the coaching industry is largely unregulated. So um, the IAPC and M took it upon themselves in 1998 uh, to set some industry standards. And we've always had the, the, the vision of protecting the end user. So that's the paying uh, member of the public. And that's whether they're hiring a coach um, or a mentor or indeed um, joining a, a training course to become a coach or a mentor. So it's actually a really powerful differentiator. So your course is accredited, uh, Gerard. Mm -hmm somebody's considering becoming a coach they've looking at one course that isn't accredited and your course that is accredited so it's a very powerful differentiator and it gives them certain guarantees it says that you've signed up to a professional standard in the industry um, it, it also proves that you care about supporting and protecting your clients not just their um, well-being but their hard-earned cash so from an individual point of view your coaches when they come out uh, with their certificate and they aim to become um, accredited, that differentiator says to the public, you know, I've had my training and my certification um, authenticated. I've had my experience uh, assessed. I've had my capabilities um, validated. So it gives you a, a massive amount of confidence in your own credibility to deliver that service. So it's about having integrity as well. Uh, and everybody signs up to the standards and ethics and the code of professional conduct. So it is something very powerful that you can share with clients who are, or, or should I say prospective clients, who are umming and ahhing about, well, shall I go with you or shall I go with somebody who's not accredited? Um, so it's incredibly powerful to help you stand out in a crowded market and mm -hmm. also help the client identify with you as a like-minded person who is giving of their very best okay well that, that sounds pretty clear mm -hmm. and again I, th I, I think and we didn't talk about this but it might be down to personal pride as well if you're a coach you want to be seen as delivering an excellent service for your clients mm -hmm. and it's important to be able to look in the mirror and say I have done anything and everything I can to elevate my services to the highest level and to look after and protect my client. Mm. Um, it's a really good point because um, what we're finding is, yes, you know, accreditation is all we do. That's our core business. But we've realized it's so much more 
than delivering a, um, an accreditation certificate. The feedback we get from our assessees say, that was an incredibly challenging experience. I'm so super proud of myself. I didn't have to put myself through it, um, but I wanted to challenge myself and be recognized in best in class. And you know what, Gerard, even the people who don't pass, and you know, we do have a certain amount of people who don't pass the first time, but mostly they pass on the second time because of the CPD work that we do with them. They say it's an incredible experience. It's affirming. Um, it helps with their confidence and it, it's, you know, very, very powerful CPD uh, for the rest of their professional journey as well. Indeed. Indeed. Well, thank you for that. So after a coach has put in time, effort and energy in mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. and then they put in some effort and energy in becoming fully accredited with mm -hmm. the authority, the International Authority for Professional Coaching and Mentoring, you know, people always listen to their own radio station, don't they? You know, what's in it for me? WIA. Yeah. Um, what could we say <laughs> to these young men and women? What would be the extra benefits and the return that would be there for them? In the last two years, we've worked incredibly hard building up um, an ev evolving list of benefits. So the leaflet in the middle uh, is something that everybody can download and get a feel for what's available. But essentially, Gerard, I'd split it into two areas. One is um, business building skills, and the mm -hmm. second is CPD. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see um, some modules, um, and that's called the business of coaching. And the reason why we put this um, package together is because we did some work with the, the likes of yourself with, and other training providers and recognized there was a gap between them coming out of uh, coaching academies, perhaps with really good uh, levels of coaching skills, but they lack the business acumen to turn it into a thriving practice. So what we were finding at the annual renewal stage is there were a lot of coaches and mentors who were going from course to course to course, so procrastinating, um, or they um, drifted back to employment and they were saying, I just can't you know, turn this into a business. So they ended up with a really expensive hobby. So we worked with training providers and put together a complimentary 12 month self-teach 12 modular e-program that anybody can join at any stage and just work their way through. So mm -hmm. that would give them uh, the business acumen that they were lacking before. And we concentrated on seven key areas, but essentially it's the same old, same old Gerard. It's the selling, it's the, um, it's, it's the confidence to act as if. And yeah. a network like an Olympian. And it's not about, you know, thinking I've got to make a sale. It's about having heartfelt connections and conversations with people because, you know, that's all a sales call is. That's all coaching is. So it should come quite naturally to us. But, it, you know, people are frightened. So there's this lovely program. People can work through it. And we've got lots of guest speakers involved in all the different modules. So that's the business building side. And the other part is the CPD. So through the weekly bulletin, we are advertising every single month um, some CPD webinar conference calls that are freely available to everybody. Um, a group of our or, or, uh, members have just written our first book, How to Win and Keep Clients. So obviously that's a must for new practitioners because we recognize, you know, you, you can have the transactional customer but actually as a coach what we really want is the relational client who is going to stay with us and this book is a business handbook of the future it's very much about relationships and keeping your customers happy it's you know so easy to get customers um but you've got to work hard to keep them happy and coming back for more and people will spend more with you if you're the right person for them so that's what we're, we're talking about in that book. On the right hand side of the, the screen, you can see action checklist for success. So we are actually an extension of our new members and whether that's an individual or a training provider, Gerard, we're an extension of their PR and marketing team. Uh, so we put together a four or five page uh, PDF checklist and said, you know, take six weeks, two months, work your way through this. If you do all of these things, it will help you get established on social media. 
Uh, you'll be um, orientated into um, our website. It will explain the membership benefits uh, behind the scenes. So everything is really clearly laid out in these lovely booklets. So it's hand-holding and it's just evolving as time goes on. So every time we come uh, to you know, a situation where we meet somebody, we think actually they've got a solution to a particular pain our members have got. We invite them on and we add them to our solution benefits list. Fantastic. And you, you mentioned the book in the middle there, how to win yeah. and keep clients. And I, as soon as it came out, I made sure I got a copy. <laughs> yeah. And I have to say, I really, really like it. There are some gems in there, absolute gems from, um, it seems you pulled together some of the top and professional and more importantly, successful coaches. Mm -hmm. And they've all given their own ideas, guidance, advice and tips so all together, it forms almost like a little MBA in mm -hmm. how to build a coaching practice. That's a lovely way of putting it. And um, we'll be bringing out the, um, the workbook, the accompanying workbook shortly, because the book is packed with exercises. Mm. We recognize people want to keep um, all their notes in one place. So we're going to produce a, a workbook stroke journal um, that will be coming out shortly to uh, complement that. Oh, great. I look forward to that. Thank you for that feedback. I'll share it with the authors. So let's say I've done my training yes. and I've qualified uh, as a wonderful coach. I now have made the decision. I want to indeed get this uh, accreditation mm -hmm. from the IAPC and M. Mm -hmm. So, what, you know, how long does it take? What are the steps? Mm -hmm. how, how many hoops will I have to jump through? What, what's the process? Okay. Um, so it's actually quite simple and it's quite quick. Um, you go online, totally automated, and you make your payment. Um, because they've come through your course, uh, your students are entitled to a £200 uh, discounted route to accreditation. So that's another big USP for when people are choosing which course is right for them. Look at mm -hmm. the big picture, uh, begin with the end in mind. So that's a major benefit. Um, you will receive a detailed uh, email. Um, it basically is um, a duplication of the criteria that's on the website, but it's in one place that tells you this is the evidence portfolio you need to get together. Um, it's, it's not uh, an onerous task by any means. Um, you'll book your 30 minute assessment call. It's a live call. It's not a role play. We don't accept recordings um, because we're very capabilities based rather than competencies based. What we recognize is you've just, you know, students have just come out of a course, they've written a thesis, etc. This is about assessing capabilities because um, we want it to be more inclusive rather than just for the academics who can write a good paper on coaching and this is proving to be really successful they'll obviously complete a self uh, reflection as part of their cpd and that's really just a couple of paragraphs um, but the assessor also does that so you get a really uh in-depth analysis from a trained person who can give you you know uh, an insight into all your little habits and areas that if you just tweak this it's going to make you a better coach and have a better tangible outcome for your client so it's really really valuable you'll sign the professional code of conduct you'll fill out the standards and ethics questionnaire and on successful completion of all of that you will be given your accreditation you will get a logo and a certificate to promote on your social media your cv etc it's valid for three years providing you maintain your annual renewal fee so what happens at the end of three years everybody whether you're a training provider or an individual you'll have a mini reassessment because we want to make sure that we are maintaining the highest possible standards. We don't want uh, to issue, you know, a bit like a driving um, license. You get your driving license when you're 18, you don't have to do anything with it until you hit 70 or 75. We want to make sure that nobody's developing any bad habits. It's also a, a valuable part of CPD, keeping people focused and on track and being the best they possibly can. Okay, that sounds absolutely fine. Very clear, very logical. Um, no problem there at all. Good. Um, so let, I, I get another question that would, I'm, I'm sure, be in people's minds is, I've just registered as a coach, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I've just registered as a student coach. 
on a coach training program. And the program itself, depending on who you train with, but with our, with our company, we pride ourselves that our programs are weighty, professional, in-depth. It can take people up to a year from registering to fully completing the program. Mm-hmm. Um, so when, when would be the best time for a student coach or a qualified coach to apply? Mm. Yes, uh, uh, that's a good question. And I've just, it's just reminded me, I forgot to ask, answer one of your questions on the previous slide. How long does it take? Um, it normally takes two to six weeks. Okay. Um, so it's, it can be super quick. Um, so when is the best time to apply? Well, in years ago, what we were seeing, Gerard, is that people were going through their course and then they were coming to us to say, I'm certified. I'd like to now investigate accreditation. In the mm-hmm. last 18 months or so, we've seen a shift where perhaps it's to do with the, 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 the quality of the coaches. I don't know, but they're much more business minded. And they say, I'm coming on a coach. Um, how quickly can I start the accreditation process? So what we're seeing is applicants are doing it in tandem. And the benefit to that, Gerard, is that while they're training on your course to become a great coach, they can be having access to our um, accredited members area. So they will get access to important documents. They can create their contract from all the templates that are in there. They can write their complaints procedure from the samples that are in there and so on. So that when they're qualified and they get their Noble Manhattan certificate, they can very quickly then apply to finish their accreditation so they might be with us in the process for many months um it pending accreditation while they're finishing their coach training <clears throat> but they are benefiting from all those cpd benefits that i talked about the business building um the business of coaches program so increasingly people are doing it in tandem and then when they've finished their coaching qualification with you they get their certification and accreditation very quickly and can throw open the doors and say, hey, world, hire me. I'm properly trained. I'm insured and I'm professionally accredited as well. So you can join at any time to suit you. Perfect. So in actual fact, it would both support and complement the information that they are gaining on the training program. Well, it would with your course because you have a business element to it as well, don't you? We do indeed. And not every coaching school does, but yours does. So ours would complement that. Yes, for sure. Oh, fantastic. Okay. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Dawn. So we've covered when to apply. Mm. If, we, if we look at the future, mm. um, we're training uh, wonderful men and women, magnificent men and women to be great yeah. coaches all over the world. Mm-hmm. We want them to succeed. We want them to do the best we can. We're providing everything we can at our end. You, with your wonderful organization, you and David and and the other board of directors there, from what I can see, are doing a magnificent job to provide support on the professional side. Mm -hmm. What now? What what, what about the future? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's a lot of initiatives coming out and a lot of benefits as well. So what I, what I said uh, on the, uh, the benefit sheet, you can expect a lot more of that. But we're we here for the lifelong journey of our coaches and mentors, Gerard. That's why we have the incremental steps from practitioner to senior to master to fellow. Um, and that means we have different things coming out for different people. So uh, whether it's writing more books Um, or paying it forward and having the opportunity to do webinars yourself there's a lot going on Uh, and that's with as you say people around the world Uh, so like your good self we're just going to grow and grow and continue to support and our mission will continue to be about being the very best rather than the biggest and giving the best service and protection (coughs) that we can to the coaches and mentors and the training providers ultimately the paying public Lovely. Well, that sounds wonderful. And thank you again for your time today. I know you're you're very busy, Dawn, and your time is valuable. So I, and on behalf of my coaches, students, faculty all over the world, I really appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. It's always a pleasure. And we look forward to welcoming welcoming even more of your students around the world. Lovely. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you.